here that's going to be helping me too. So Stuart Crawford of Hello. the Crawford team, the man himself, and this is Christy Shriver. She's another one of our senior mortgage bankers. She actually sits here every Wednesday in the second office on the left down here on the floor. So she's always available for any kind of questions you have. She can do on the spot client prequals. Um, but she's an amazing lending resource. She can answer pretty much any product question or scenario that you'd have. So I wanted to make sure that you know Christy's here and available for you. She has to get on a, um, a borrower call in just a second here, so she's going to have to pop out, but I wanted her to say hello. Nice to meet everybody. Yes. She's you, uh, literally, I know it's probably biased coming from my mouth, but I promise you she's amazing and she's a wealth of knowledge so if you guys ever need anything stop by our office email or call her she's she is awesome um yeah, the door's always open and one thing about christy i think that makes her really special is she came from a processing and underwriting background so she really understands what the kind of potential problems that could occur during the funding and she we anticipate those on the front end that way when we issue a prequal it's completely bulletproof she answers you know if they answer no to one question she knows that's like five more questions she needs to answer so it's very individualized for the client to make sure that we anticipate everyone's needs so christy's an expert at that thank you yes appreciate thank you. it nice to meet everybody all right well Stuart and i today are gonna um do you want to get over here Stuart? sure yeah um we're gonna kind of tag team this class but we are here to talk to you guys about how to create an amazing transactional experience for your clients. Um, but before we start, if you wouldn't mind, real quick, let's just go around since it's a smaller group and say your name, how long you've been an agent, and maybe one thing you're hoping to learn out of the class so we can make sure to hit what you guys want to hear today. So who wants to start? Garrett, I'm picking on you. Garrett Cornella, <laughs> my home group. I've been an agent for about three years now. And just any little extra nuggets just to figure out how to be better in the transaction. Perfect. Got it. Hi, I'm Susie McGuire um, with my home group, and I've been aging just a couple of weeks. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wait, sorry. Okay, so you said things to make it easier throughout the transactional process. Okay, tips. Or what about you? What are you hoping to get out of it today? Um, pretty much the same thing. How to just make it easier and have good communication. Good one. Okay, perfect. Who's next? Hi, my name is Oika. Um, I've been licensed since uh, January this year, but I was a commercial transaction coordinator. So um, I went through with another brokerage one uh, closing, and I'm usually pretty good when it comes to communication and being very patient. Um, I come from a hospitality background. So I just found that um, with the previous brokerage, it was chaos. Like I didn't know what to expect, and so I found myself having a lot of anxiety. So I never want to relay that to my clients. So again, just be very streamlined communication, how to prepare them for the stages of what's coming next. Perfect. Okay. Makes sense. Good one. Where are you? And I'm Irma Davis with my home group, and I've been an agent nine years. And any information I can get. Perfect. So I'm Andrea Renier, and I'm with Home Smart. I've been in business 24 years, and uh, just always wanting to improve because I know the business changes quite a bit, and with online things, you know, I just think we can always learn more. Yeah, no question. It's amazing how fast it all changes. <laughs> yeah. How about you? I'm Linda Wright. I'm with Home Smart. I've been an agent now for four months. I was an agent in Colorado for two years. And I'm just here to learn whatever you want to teach me. Great. <laughs> awesome. Easy. <laughs> Patty Party. And I'm with Realty Executives. Um, I was a referral agent for a couple of years, and now I decided to do it on my own. So okay. um, anything I can learn, I'd love to. Awesome. awesome. Ron Wendu with uh, Quantum Realtors. Been uh, licensed for about 10 years, and just here to hear, listen to see what you may have to Help me out. Awesome. Good. Well, um, why are we qualified to teach this class, I think, will be good for us to tell you. So um, I've been on the business development side helping agents with marketing and lead gen and all that kind of stuff for years, about eight years now. Stuart has been in the mortgage business for 17 years, and we run, um, he runs, one of the top producing teams in the state on the lending side. We're 
really proud of that, but we would not have been able to get there if he was not obsessed with building a great system. And that's what he's really done and that's where he shines is he has built out a complete system that we're gonna talk about that we provide our borrower clients with, but it's really almost the same on your end. It's a lot of the same parallels as far as what you can do to really create an outstanding client journey. So we're gonna talk about that today and we'll make sure to touch on all of your guys' um, things that you have questions about. But this is one thing I always like to start with and it's not because I wanna scare you, but because I think it's important to keep in mind always. So there are currently 57,224 licensed agents in Maricopa County. That is crazy. Um, the good news is the majority of them aren't full-time and don't do full-time business. Um, the average agent in Arizona, I think, does two to three deals a year. So that shows you that the vast majority of agents are just doing this to deal, you know, sell their own house or a neighbor's and don't really make it a career. They're not you guys sitting here to learn about real estate. So you are on, on the side that um, actually cares and wants to make this a really great business. But with that, you always have to keep in mind, how are you going to set yourself apart? And creating a great client experience is, in my, our opinion, the best way to do that because that's how you can build a great repeat and referral business of people who say, you have to use them. It was an amazing experience. She took great care of me. I mean, that's ultimately what you want. Um, so we're going to kind of talk about that. So what does separate the good from the great? Some of the things that we believe are systems, first and foremost, and we're going to talk about some systems you can create in your own business to help make sure that you're always providing a high level of service. And then, yeah, always just thinking, which some of you guys mentioned, how can I provide a higher level of service? I've been doing business for this many years, but how can I make it better? And I think um, if you have that mentality and mindset, you're, you're always gonna grow, which is a good thing. So I'm gonna let Stuart kind of jump in on this part. He's yes. our systems guy. Still read. Yes. Um, <laughs> that to be too, oh, whichever you want. Oh, yeah. So Here's one thing I think it's, it, that's good to share is I'm a big believer that whether you've done one transaction or thousands, all this stuff's applicable and whether you do what we do or what you guys do because it all is going to just boil down to taking care of people, right? So, you know, sometimes you'll have people that they're so experienced and I'll sit down with them and I realize they don't have a system and they're high producing teams, whether they're realtors or loan officers, and it, it never ceases to amaze me how many people don't have a system. Um, and, and I know firsthand, you can sit in a room like this, someone can give you an idea of what a system looks like, you can write it all down, get all excited, walk out, and then you go, how do I even start? So I'm, 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 I'm empathetic, excuse me, to that because I've been in those shoes. So hopefully the stuff we go through today, you guys can see how easy it is to apply. And then I think when we're done, like I've got a couple ideas on quick things like homework assignments you can just go do on your own that will like help you walk out, you're going, okay, got it. I can go do these three things today, and it's gonna change, it'll get me on the right trajectory, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, uh, and you just interrupt me at any time if yeah. you need to talk. She's the smart one, and obviously the better looking one. Um, big misconception, this is not just a marketing plan, correct? Systems should be used to build an agenda to, to communicate and understand the entire client journey. So, to me, a system is just a communication plan. So, years ago, when I decided to have a system and a factory, almost, for how we handle a client, which is not just a client that's buying a house, but a realtor, right? Because you guys are our client too. And in some cases, you're really our primary clients that we take care of. You guys obviously will take care of the client. Um, and you guys are our main referral source. So I thought through, how do we build a client journey? Like, what do I need to accomplish to make everybody feel good on the other end? And I went out and interviewed a bunch of realtors that I worked with. And, every, and the questions I asked were, what drives you crazy about lenders? What's the worst experience you've had? What would you want to be better? What's something I could do that would wow you? You know, all, all these types of questions. And every single answer I got, I mean, 100% of the answers, all somehow I could relate to communication easily. I mean, so then I, it kind of hit me. I went, okay, this system has to just be about communicating to people, being in front of it, hitting them before they even know they need to be hit, right? Telling you things you don't even know you need to know, and then I tell you, and you go, oh, wow, that sounds awesome. So um, I was just on a call this morning with our company, and I was just citing that, like, I love customer, great customer service. Like, everybody does, right? Nobody likes to go to a restaurant and be like, where's the server? I've been here 20 minutes. It just, it just, it just sucks. Um, and little things go a long way. That's where, like, the simplicity of this is. 
Because when you think systems and client journey, like you might be thinking, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to build this entire massive thing to change what I'm doing. It's really easy stuff, which we'll hit on. But the example I gave this morning was, there's a restaurant in town I love to go to, and every time the next day, I get a phone call from them, they leave a voicemail, hey, thanks so much for coming. And, and I know they don't know me from the next guy, and who cares, and why would, why would that make me feel good? But for some reason it does, you know? You need something? No, I'll see here. Yeah, okay. no you're problem. better. Yeah, thanks. Um, but like, it's just an example. It's little things that make people feel good and little things that I'm telling you, I'll give you guys a couple small things that I can talk to 50 people in the room and I know two people will go do them, right? So it's like they're simple and if you do them, you already are making yourself different from the other 57,224, whatever that number was. That's really what you're trying to do, right? Because in my business, our business, if a client calls me, my mindset has to be, if this person already talked to three other mortgage people, or is about to, because they might, how am I going to make sure the conversation with me is the one that they walk away from going, I think this is the person I want to deal with, right? Does that make sense? And that's the same for you yeah. guys, you know? For exactly a so. listing, they, a, a seller may interview three listing agents, or four, both prior to the listing. So it's the little things that they're going to remember. Otherwise, what we do, what every agent does, is very similar, right? You're going to get the property ready to list. You're going to put take great photos. You're going to put it on the MLS. But it's really how you make the client feel throughout the process that is what's going to set you apart from others. So we're going to talk about that today. And real quick, one thing I wanted to say too, go back real quick one. Oh, yeah. That top bullet point is, so I have probably sat down with, I mean, well over a thousand agents and done like business consults over the years. And I always ask the questions, do you have a marketing plan? Do you have a business plan? Do you have a, you know, a transactional system? And almost every agent has some sort of idea of what they want to do for their marketing. Um, a lot of people have an idea of what, you know, the, how much money they want to make, but very few ever sit down and have mapped out how they're going to take care of their clients throughout the transaction. And in my opinion, that's the most important of the three. So, um, yeah, you know, kudos to you guys for being here today to learn a little more. Sorry. No, you're good. It's perfect. Um, this I'm not going to read all this or any of it, but um, so don't worry. But this is a, this is our system. So this is an example of we have different versions, but this is a part of our system that when we sat down to write it out, this is literally what it looks like. I sat down with a piece of paper. I'm like, okay, from A to Z, what happens as soon as Garrett sends me a lead? How what is going to happen in the factory? Every single line item I could possibly think of. So that's what we're going to try to help you guys kind of build. Um, and I'll just say one thing. I've, I've had people say before, well, you don't really need a system if you don't have an assistant or you're not a team or you're a one-person operation. And that is, could, is so far from the truth, right? You can apply a system to anything. And when I first wrote this out, I mean, other than having one assistant that was helping me with paperwork stuff, I mean, that's just two of us. And, uh, and then as we grew, all I had to do was just say, okay, well, now that we've hired you, you're going to do these four lines and we'll do the rest, right? You just, you just plug people in, dish it out. Um, so, when you're building systems, obviously, the most, and I'm not going to read every word of these guys, but the, the thing you should be aware of is other than great customer service, you have to have a system to follow up with the people that you're being getting in front of. That's the, one of the biggest common denominators of failure I see in realtors, mortgage people, is they get all these leads, whether it's at open houses or wherever it's at, and yes, maybe they call them once, they write it down on a notepad, but then after that, they just they stop trying. And that's, that's literally the worst thing you can do. I mean, if, if you walk away with anything today, get a system for following up with people. That is it. We did that years after building our initial system. We got a better system for that, and it changed everything for us. Because just because the guy says, well, I'm not ready to buy for six or seven months, most people say, okay, well, here's my number. Call me when you're ready. That guy's never going to call you, right? You have to be the one that proactively communicates with them. And I'm not saying you got to hit them with an email every week and annoy them. There's a way to do it professionally where they know that you're trying to just be a resource for them. But when you, you've you got to have a system for that. So I know in our business, if someone tells me they're not ready to buy a house for six months, we're calling them in two. Because I can't tell you how many times we've, we've waited too long and they go, oh, I ended up buying a month after I talked to you because I saw this house or I met a new realtor or whatever. And it's like, don't trust what they say, not because they're trying to mislead you, but you just, life changes, right? So we have to stay in front of them. And that, that's, that's the game, is staying in front of these people. So as you build out a system, you want to have, you've got to have a way of doing that. And if you have a CRM, if you don't have a CRM, you should get one. 
you can go old school with a notebook. It, it, it works for some people, but you've got to have a way to do that. And the biggest thing with that is, guys, don't give up. Because that's where people fail. They get the system, and they go, I'm going to keep following up with this guy. And then they call the guy three times, he never answers. And they just feel like, oh, he doesn't want to talk to me, so I'm going to stop calling him. That's the worst thing you can do. He's just not calling you because he's not ready. You're not, you're not important to him at that moment. But it, I, this has happened to me personally, where I've had service people that I've hired to do something, and they bug me, bug me, bug me after they give me a quote, and I'm just busy doing whatever. But then all of a sudden, when I'm like, when they hit me at the right time, and I'm like, oh, I, I do need to get the roof fixed. I call them and I get it done. Right? If you wouldn't have kept bugging me, I probably would have called a couple other people. So it, 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 it works, and in our business, we see it every week where we kind of joke, we brought somebody back from the dead. It's like, oh my gosh. This, Jamie on our team will be like, I've been emailing this guy for six months. He's never responded one time. And now all of a sudden he wants to get on the phone and talk about like getting a loan because he's ready, right? So. Real quick, I'm yeah. touch on something here too. So um, in your business, these are kind of the systems that we feel like you should ultimately want to perfect in your business. And if you don't have any, you're not going to start with all of them. You're going to pick one to start with. And when you get that down, you're going to move on to the next. But let's just kind of go through them real quick. So raise your hand if you wouldn't mind. Who has a system for lead follow-up? Raise your hand. Right? So most people don't. And that, as Stuart said, that's the most important thing because if you're not following up with the leads, it's really hard for them to turn into clients, right? Um, and all the stats of research in any sales job shows that the where you make your money is after the eighth follow-up. It's in almost any business across all industries and sales. Eight plus follow-ups is where the money is, um, but it's hard because most of us give up before then. But that's why if you have a CRM, like he said, where you can put people on a drip, where it's automatically emailing them, and then maybe you do a check-in call once a month or so, um, it, that's where you see all of a sudden clients coming out of the woodwork, like we see. So they come back from the dead, and then it's like business we weren't even planning on or expecting. It's almost just like bonus business, which is great. Um, so I, we encourage you to do that. If you have questions about CRMs, you can ask me after. But um, who has a, a system or a plan for a listing opportunity? That they do the same things every time when you have a listing appointment. Anyone have a plan? Sort of. I see Garrett kind of shaking. So make one. Yeah, you need, and making one is it does, and it doesn't have to be hard, you know. But we can, there for those you should have a plan that you follow when somebody calls you and says I want to talk to you about listing my house. You should know that you're going to do these four steps and then you're going to meet with them and then you're going to do these two follow-up steps and make it the same every time. Um, same thing with the buyer. You know, you need to, it's going to save you time and energy and frustration if you kind of do the um, questions ahead of time to really narrow down what the buyer is looking for um, and have, see if they've spoken to a lender before you waste your time even talking to them about what their dream property is. So if you have a system for that to kind of really that way when you have the buyer appointment, that is going to turn into a buyer who is going to close with you because you've done your due diligence. Um, and we'll talk about those. Transaction flow, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about is once you have a contract, what are the touch points that you need to check in with people throughout the transaction to provide a great experience? And that's really what we're going to focus on today. Um, Post-close, so after, you clo after they close the deal with you, 95% of agents forget about them, right? They're on to the next client. But th that is where the repeat and referral business comes from. So having a system of staying in front of your past clients can build your business exponentially too. Referrals and database. So there are systems that you can build. Don't try to do all these at once. It's too hard. My, in my opinion, if you get better at lead follow-up and you get better at your transactional experience, your business is going to grow almost overnight just from those two and then this I put in here because the one of the other benefits of building a system is because then it's not as stressful for you right that way when you do get a listing opportunity you're not having to frantically prepare and put things together you know exactly what you need to do so it immediately you know alleviates anxiety um, and helps you feel more prepared because you've already done this system before and with that 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 be confidence will show with your clients as well. They'll think you're more prepared, which you are, and you'll ultimately win more listings and buyers. Um, but with that, life happens on our end too. So if you're having a stressful life event happening, it 
you're more likely to provide great service because you're just following your system. You're not having to think about what to do next when you're already overwhelmed in your personal life. You just go because if that's the system that you built. So that's really, I think, one of the benefits too is great systems point. allow you to handle things even when you're dealing with unexpected circumstances too. Good. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So these are some of the things that, that, that we recommend that we've done. And we created email templates for everything. It's, it's kind of scary how many email templates we have. They kind of got to a point without, yeah. Do you have a printout of, of all of this? Wait, we can or, email it to you. Or email yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll send this out. If okay. you signed in, I can email everything to okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you memorize the whole thing, we'll send it to you for free. <laughs> <laughs> email will be fine. Yeah, thank you. Um, but we, we wrote up email templates for everything, meaning if you have this journey that we built, right? So the second the lead comes in, to the first time I talk to the lead, to the, when I follow up with them, to now he's pre-approved, to now he's under contract. I mean, we can map them all out real easy. There's an email template that was written for each of those, so as they move through that client journey, we send this email. And you don't have to have some crazy you know, automated system to do this. We just went old school, we wrote them, you can save them into your Outlook or whatever your email, email program is yeah. as templates. And then when you know, oh, I just finished my first call with the client, okay, part of my system is I send my first call email, right? You go in there, do the drop down, just change their name, hi Bob, and boom, the email fires. And what's cool about that is your clients will start to notice that you do things consistently. And it automatically puts you apart from the rest of your competition. I mean, 99% of your company is not doing that. Um, you look more professional, and they respect the fact that you have this way that you communicate, which is the, I'm gonna skip ahead here, right, the three big communicates. We already kind of hit on that, like that's everything. Um, and so email templates I'm huge on, and we are huge on, I mean, yeah. it's such a big deal. Uh, and what's cool about them too is, remember, you can get business from anywhere. So if I have a transaction, and I have an email template that I send, let's say, at, um, appraisal just got in stage and I send that email template in my world to you to the listing agent and to the escrow officer so they see that hey we're moving along the tracks what do you think ends up happening when they start getting more deals from us and they see that we do that they know what to expect from us and then all of a sudden if they have a realtor let's say a title company has a, a client their deals not going well we've had this happen let's say you know what you should call these guys because we get, sometimes we're on the other end of their deals and it's like, their communication's off the charts. And so we pick up business that way. It's the same thing for you guys, right? I mean, a title company could see Talk that, agents. a client's having an issue, whatever. You just, you just never know where business is gonna come from. Remember that too, right? So, um, uh, weekly client updates by phone or email. That's a big one too. You know, the, if that goes back into follow-up, like I don't wanna be overkill on this stuff, but if you've got a list of people you're following up with, Put them on a, a, some sort of weekly something that you write, whether it's about what's going on in the economy or you pull your on a newsletter thing, whatever you can dream up, or maybe it's just you know your thought of the week. Um, but I know I get these from realtors all the time. You guys probably get stuff like that from lenders. I mean, a lot of people do this stuff, automation, that piece. But to me, I would not automate it. I would just build in your email every time you meet someone. So what we do is every time we take on a new agent, let's say you said, you know, I, we'd like to start working with you guys, what's that look like? We're gonna take your name and, and put you into our system, you're gonna go onto my personal email grouping list, so when I type out my economic report every week, it just goes to those people. And you can always tell me to take you off, right? I'm not trying to give you something you don't want. But what it does is it, again, you start seeing a system. You get something personal from me every Monday that's similar information on what's going on in the market, and it's a reminder to call me if you need something. Same thing for you guys with clients. Does that make sense? It's very easy. Um, tell clients that they can anticipate happening during the transaction and set expectations. So this is huge. So part of our system, if you're gonna write email templates or set your client up for the next steps, always set them up for the next steps, right? So, but build that out from the upfront and also from the transaction side. So meaning if you just met a client in an open house, a potential client, you already put yourself above and beyond everybody else. If you say something, to the, and I'm just making this up as I go, something to the effect of, hey, I just want to let you know, great meeting you today. Thanks for giving me you know, your, your email address. I'm going to send you this X, whatever it is, right? Give them something that they're going to forget you told them you're going to send them, then you're going to send it, then they're going to get it, and they go, oh, wow, that guy actually did what he said he was going to do, right? One of the best tricks I ever got when I first got in this business is I had 
somebody tell me, when you go to start meeting with realtors, tell them, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and call you again at you know one o'clock on next Friday, or I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up at this specific time and then start doing it. And they'll start noticing that when you say you're gonna do something, and they're, they're odd times. You do it and it builds this like trust of you're a guy that does what you say you're gonna do is people and that worked for me. I mean it was one thing that helped me gather trust and, and start building some things up and you guys can do that on your end too. Um, uh, take responsibility and apologize when needed. That should go without saying, but you'd be shocked. Some of the teams I coach and talk to, it's like they're always doing this, right? What happened on that file? And everyone's like pointing at the two people next to them. Always take ownership, right? If you mess up, we, you know, we're not perfect. You mess up, you say, hey, I, this is the mistake that happened. This is how I'm going to fix it. It's all about how you communicate, right? Never hide is, I think, the, the example of that. Because we get those calls all the time. Say, hey, Stuart, They've gone dark this hard. lender's not calling me back. I know something's wrong, right? The guy's hiding from me. Um, we're, you know, we're the opposite on that. Hold people accountable, goes without saying, align yourself with good people, goes without saying, right? Make sure you have great vendor partners, title, lender, uh, et cetera. Because really, when you're interviewing these people, like if you're interviewing us to be one of your partners, our only job is to protect your reputation, right? You send us a lead, if we don't do a good job, that client's gonna go back to you and say, why did you send me that person? Right? So we're trying to elevate the way your reputation is by being you know, exceptional in our um, back to expectations, um, this is everything, and something I, I didn't fully hit on is always try to set them up. So even when you get into the transaction stage, so you get a contract, you get a contract, and then it's like, okay, what happens now? And I don't, I don't know. I mean, then we want to give me a staff. Like, if one of your clients goes on a contract, what do you say to them? Anybody want to? Yeah, you, you, get, you get under contract. Now you're getting on the phone call and telling the client that they're under contract. What is that conversation like? Is it tomorrow starts the inspection period? Be ready. Yeah. Be ready for a lot of communication from title, from escrow, from everybody else. For example, right? You're setting an expectation. You're saying, hey, now that you're under contract, I just want to take ten minutes of your time and explain to you what's going to happen next because it's really important to me that you're comfortable during this process. And the only way I can make sure you're comfortable is I make sure you understand everything, right? And then you say things like that, and people. You can kind of feel them like relax a little bit because they know you've got their back. Um, so that's the point of that. Setting expectations and every time you move to another milestone in that journey, whether whatever it is, you know, the inspection's back, the bins or whatever, have it written down. This is what I'm going to say to the client in this stage and just set them up for the next thing. People hate not knowing, right? The what if out there and to some of the stuff that not knowing what happens next in the transaction, it stresses them out. If there's anything on these I'm not hitting with, you no, want to yeah. let me know. Um, uh, we already covered up through this, setting expectations. This one's a big one though, helping to anticipate challenges before they occur. So in our world, and I'm sure there's another slide on this, but I get all excited on this stuff, is if you have to call us for an update, we failed you. That's how, you're, that's how you should be with your clients. And Mr. Client, once you're under contract, if you've had to call me, you can say it in a, kind of a nice way, if you have to call me to ask me what's going on with your transaction, I want you to know that that, I I'm not like, doing my job. Yeah. yeah, I haven't done my job. I'm going to keep you so proactively informed and with what's happening, even if nothing's happening. So I'm not sure in your world how much this happens, but in our world, sometimes it's go, 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 go. Get pre-approved. Get your credit pulled. Send me every documentation you've ever had in your entire life, right? And then get under contract. Sign disclosures. And then it's like, okay, there's like this lull, right? They heard from us like crazy. It was like everything was needed five minutes ago situation. And now it's like there's this lull as it gets processed and it goes into underwriting, right? So what we found is that quietness isn't good. They get scared. It makes them feel like, wait, you were all over me like, why don't I do for a week? Like, what's going on? So we proactively just make sure we hit them with an update. Hey, just want to let you know there's everything's going great with your file. Nothing to be aware of right now. We're just waiting for it to be processed. So all of our email templates always have turn times estimated. So at any point in the transaction, we're going to say, you know, now your uh, your loan's been cleared for closing. Anticipate loan documents be sent to title in one day or whatever the milestone is. So we're always kind of giving them something to go off of. Do you set that up as like a task in your CRM, just saying, hey, you know, just in case we haven't been in, in communication for the past two days, you just have something pop up and say, okay, maybe reach out to you know Joe Schmo. Great question. So um, yeah, I mean yes. So we our follow up system with some of that stuff we use it. It's like discretionary. So our 
Our production manager is like your transaction coordinator in your world, kind of helps facilitate the paperwork once you get under contract. She just knows based on how much communications happen, she just uses her brain to say, okay, I'm gonna, I'll just check in with him in a few days. You know, just to, and she sets a task, she gets to forget about it. That's the key too. If you, if you try to rely on your own memory to get this stuff done, don't take offense to this. No matter how genius we are, it's it, you're gonna fail. Because life happens too. It's just you, know? you just forget yeah. stuff. There's too much going on. You know what I mean? So, plus the beauty of not having to remember is it allows you to keep focusing on what you need to be doing and moving forward. And then you know these things are gonna come back and remind you. Oh hey, you need to call this guy. She's like, oh, okay, shoot him a quick text. Everything's cool in your file. Just and they this just makes people feel good, right? It's like. You're building a house and you don't have to call your builder to find out what's going on and he's always calling you telling you what's happening next it's like that feels good right no one likes chasing people no and i think for clients it alleviates their anxiety right off the bat too if you say that no matter what i'm going to keep you updated you don't need to worry you know there that immediately sets them at ease from the beginning that you have it handled you have their best interests in mind always and it really sets the tone for a smoother transaction ultimately but then you do have to follow up and update them um, but that I think is a very important point of it is, um, yeah, you, even if there's almost nothing to say, like Stuart said, you can't let there be that lull in communication. So you just have to call and say, Hey, no news is good news. We're still waiting on docs, but everything's going, you know, titles working, whatever it is. Um, but just wanted to let you know, so you hear from me, do you have any questions I can answer at this time? But I feel like that, the almost communicating when there's no reason to goes a really long way. But even more so than communicating when you have to, yeah. if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And that stuff all goes for even when you're cultivating people, right? You've got them in the open house, whether you're getting your leads and staying on them. One thing I'll add that's just a quick thing you might want to write down. I'm really big on this. Every email that comes out from us will always end with, please let us know if you have any more questions. No matter what the conversation is, no matter if I know deep in my heart I've answered every question they've had at that moment, Everyone knows on our team when we communicate, it always your email always ends with that same kind of sentence because it just right. Some people go, that's not that big of a deal, but there's these they tell me there's these little things that people start noticing, and it just makes them feel good. They're like they know you're constantly making sure you're comfortable, are you good? Is there anything? Because I can't tell you how many phone calls I've gotten off, and I think the person's okay, and then you realize that the other they're not okay, just because some people don't want to show that right and then it, like they start processing and it's like then i gotta unwind stuff so we're constantly saying things like that makes sense and, you know if i said 20 times i'll stand up here um things to keep in mind what do they value how do they communicate what do they expect from their experience what are their barriers to success put yourself in their shoes that's huge we're always empathetic we always are thinking of what's it like whatever i'm saying to this person how are they taking it on their end because they may not be hearing it the way I'm saying it. So that's why I say, does that make sense? Do you have more questions? Do you feel comfortable? Like we say things like that. So if you just were to write that down and ask those things more often, you'll be surprised what comes out of that. Um, and uh, as far as how do they communicate on that, I think it's important, the, the people that are the best at relationships that I found are very good at catering to whoever the individual is from a communication standpoint, right? So if I'm dealing with a person who's type A, I can communicate a certain way with that person because they like it. If I'm dealing with someone who's over here, right? But it's key to be genuine, right? It's not like you're faking who you are to these different people. But if that makes sense, there's, there's really an art to that. And even in our system, you guys ever heard of bull, owl, lamb, tiger? Bolt system? So, sorry, I made that first. Oh, you're good, yeah. So, the, the, some bolt, B-O-L-T, like a lightning bolt. Oh, okay. And um, B is bull, O is owl, L is lamb, T is tiger. Four personalities that exist out there. I mean, I'm not, I didn't come up with this, by the way. <laughs> so it's just someone else did. Um, but you can use that to, you know, in our system, if we talk to a new client, and let's say I know Liz is going to talk to them at some point too because we're working as a team, it might be helpful for her to know that, hey, this is a tiger. This is a super outgoing, like, loves to talk and, you know, kind of person. So a bull is kind of like your type A, get to the point, don't ask me how my day is, what are the numbers, what do we got, what's going on. An owl is sort of like, um, I, I, I picture the owl with the glasses, like with a pipe, like the professor, you know? <laughs> analytical. Yeah, analytical, like really like digging the into the numbers. Types. And is gonna ask every question about every penny on every everything. 
Um, a lamb is just sort of like never going to let you know that there's a problem. They're just going to take everything you tell them, and they're going to go back and process. They're very calm. And so, um, but it's interesting if you start just playing that game in your head when you're dealing with people, you start understanding how best to communicate with them. Um, so they're receptive to it because you don't ever want to turn somebody off, right? Um, so kind of a cool deal. Um, Real quick, I think, yeah. back to that. Um, these are questions you should ask people at the beginning of, before you even get them under contract. I mean, you should, when they're a buyer or a seller, before you even start working together. How do you like, how do you want to communicate? How would it be best for me to communicate with you? Ask people that. And don't just assume that because they texted you the first couple times, that's what they want. Maybe they thought that's what you wanted. You know, so make sure to ask the question. That alone caters to them. Um, and then follow it from then on out because I know I'm the type of person I don't want you to call me on the phone period so and it just it's, it can be generational it can be personality type it can be whatever um, but ask that and then follow it all the way through um, what do they expect from their experience ask them that I think you know sometimes people have different expectations that you're not aware of and how can you meet them if you don't ask them and people are usually really I think they're kind of impressed by that question because it shows them that you're not afraid of whatever they're going to say. So, um, and they may say, you know, they'll, and oftentimes they'll tell you exactly what their goal is uh, right away there. And so I think hearing it in their own words helps you if, with any misconceptions that you may have. Um, that's a really great one too. And then barriers to success, that one's not something I would ask, but that's more like, um, kind of, what are they almost? Con what are they scared of? Have they had a bad lending experience in the past? Did they list their house before and it fell out? You know, anticipate any kind of sensitivities that this may have. A lot of this goes into sales psychology, but it's really if you can understand those things and then kind of cater your service to those, it'll make them feel immediately more at ease the whole time too. So. That's kind of what I was with those questions. I think some of them are great to ask directly and others are just, um, you know, tell me about the, the, instead of the what are barriers to success question, I would maybe say, tell me about any past experiences you've had buying or selling. You know, give me a quick rundown on, on your experiences with that. And they'll usually tell you, oh, when we bought a house, it was a nightmare. The agent was terrible. The lender, we were three days late closing and we had to reschedule our movers. You know, they'll tell you. And hearing that, then obviously you know what to be sensitive of, that we 100% are closing on time. We're gonna get them the keys a day early. You know, then you really cater to whatever their situation is. Um, and oftentimes, if it's a couple situation, they may have different experiences. So it's good to hear from both of them too on what their expectations are and what their sensitivities are too. Yeah, exactly. And remind the people that like, just, you can be open with me. Yeah. Like the trust tree, right? Like, tell me. I feel like you guys get a lot more of that than we do. I don't know what is it is the people that lend the money, but sometimes they don't want to tell us everything. <laughs> but um, but yeah, those are great points. Um, uh, taking control, just you know, reminding them in your own way that you're the professional and you're there to take care of them. I think that's a big one because you get into heated situations in real estate, right? Whether it's you guys or us or something's happened and they're, they're, they're mad at somebody. It doesn't mean they're mad at you. It doesn't mean they're mad at me, but they're mad at something that happened. Maybe it's a seller. And... Sometimes you have to think of a way to remind people that, hey, you hired me for a reason because you knew I was going to take care of you and I'm going to take care of you. And I'm a big believer in as soon as problems come up, and I kind of said this earlier, tackling them as fast as you can and always having a plan B or a solution or how you're going to handle it as soon as you talk to the client. So if I go on the phone, it's like, look, I know this happened. Here's my thoughts on how we're going to rectify this. And I always give a time frame. Give me an hour. Let me make some phone calls because what happens is people don't do that and they just send a text and say, hey, I'm working on it. The client's like, what does that mean you're working on it? And am I going to hear from you in 10 minutes or am I going to yeah. hear from you next Tuesday? So with us, it's just, hey, we are working on it. I have two solutions in mind. I'm going to make a few phone calls. Bear with me. Give me a few hours. I'll call you as soon as I have an update. I highly recommend that's a phone call. I know that a lot of times these days people text or email because it's it seems easier but imagine if you're the client i mean if i got the phone call from my guy and he's like Stuart, here's what's going on i would be like okay we're cool here's you a know? really good so, tip though on that um i completely agree with phone call is best in any type of problem solving scenarios however if you have clients who are text they want text do the voice text so i have done this with several clients where it's like i want them to hear what i'm saying in the tone in which i'm saying it so i just record 
record it, you know, have her know how to do that on the text and send it that way. There, it's still in the method in which they asked, but they're gonna understand your meaning and delivery better that way. So, and they can quickly listen without having to uh, kind of commit to a phone call. Cause I think a lot of people are afraid to commit to phone calls cause they don't know how long it's gonna take and they're in between whatever appointments. So um, the voice text can be really helpful in making sure you get your message across the way you wanna say it if they want to communicate by text. Nice. Yeah. Great point. Um, <clears throat> You want to do checklist, Liz? Oh yeah. So um, this I think is really helpful, especially for newer agents, but really for any agent. Um, having a checklist of everything that you do, you know, on the buyer side and on the seller side. Do you guys have these? Mm -mm. Okay. So my home group has them that they can, Kelly can send it to you. I mean, I can actually send it to you guys with the notes if you want. But they have one that's really helpful. It talks about all the required documentation and when everything's due. But having a checklist like this is awesome. So this is just a um, AAR form, so it's pretty generic. Um, but basically, it just has you know acceptance of purchase contract, earnest money is deposited to escrow, spuds completed and delivered to buyer, the bins are due, seller response to the bins are. So it's all of the steps of the transaction outlined out there, and then which date they're due, and then what date they're done. So it visually helps you. If you don't have a CRM or a system that does this all for you, I would go old school and put this in the front of your file and keep it in a notebook. Is that from, where is that from? It's from AAR, but I can send it to you. Okay. Yeah, I have it. Um, and, you know, anything, you know, other actions, if there's well, septic, lead paint, if there's a cure period, but it really helps you kind of anything required with the transaction, uh, it lets you know. This is a more of a personalized one and the, the dates are not, it's so that you don't have to write in dates every time, but for example, you know, um, negotiate for repairs and treatments, when after inspections, use an amendment to request repairs and treatments. So it's a little different depending on, some people are this personality type where you just wanna check a box, and some people are this personality type where you wanna write in specific dates. So whatever personality type you are, find a checklist that works for you to keep you organized. It'll really help. Um, and checklists feel good, right? <laughs> when, you're go, when you're moving forward in a process and you're actually seeing visually your progress, it helps you keep the end goal in mind, even if it's been a frustrating transaction. So I think checklists help, you know, just with the whole motivation and mindset piece of it too. But um, my home group has them and then yeah, I can send the AR form out, but they have them, I would have a, both a buyer one and a seller one that walks you through what you need to do. And you can keep any notes on there as well that's happened with the transaction too, or specific, you know, if you had, had an issue with a title company or a lender or whatever, you can notate that on there as well for your own records. Checklists are good. Pilots use them. They don't fly without them, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're good self-accountability tools, definitely. Um, it's just like the LSU that... We always have to send, right? That's like our transaction checklist. And uh, I just thought of something that I wanted to touch yeah, on. Yeah, go back. Real quick. So this right here, this take control slide I, we added today, and I think Stuart does an amazing job of this with our clients because we tell them exactly, you know, you can trust us, here's what we're gonna do, this is what you can expect. But from an agent standpoint, I think so many agents are afraid to do this because you don't want to come off as abrasive or uh, too assertive. Um, so many agents, I feel like, really cater too much to the client. Oh, whatever you want, whatever. Oh, I can show whatever you need. I'm told, whatever, you're, all, you know, what do you want to list it at? I'll list it at whatever you want. No, stop all that. Because then they feel like they can walk all over you and they will. I mean, imagine if you went to a doctor's office and they're like, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to do this test or do you want to do this surgery or do you want to get this shot? What do you want to do? Would you trust that doctor? No, you wouldn't. And you guys have to think of yourself, you are professionals and you have to operate as such. And this blew my mind. Um, Jason Mitchell is a great agent here. He's one of the top agents in the state and in the country. And I heard him, he gave a speech at Greyhawk a couple years ago, and it was about like immediately he takes control and he lets the client know that he's running the ship, you know? He's catering to their needs but it's his job to make sure that he's in control of the situation. And I think when you take that approach, it really kind of, your clients are like, wow, okay. I think he's got it handled, you know? But instead of, and this, this is where you can cater to them, 
but still have control. And an example of that is if you have a buyer that wants to go show properties, instead of making yourself available at their whim, say, I can show you Tuesday at three or Saturday at 10, which would you prefer? Two options, that's it. You're not just whatever they want. And same thing, you know, when a seller wants to talk about list price, it's not up to them, right? It's up to you. And when it's, you know, like, so that's where you really have to, I think by taking control in a graceful way, it immediately sets that thing that you're in control, you're a professional, um, you know, this is what you do. This is not what they do. So I think that is something I wanted to touch on. A lot of people are afraid, especially newer agents, or if you haven't done a lot of transactions or don't have a lot of business, I feel like a lot of newer agents are scared to do that, but you're immediately gonna earn respect by doing that. So sorry, I just wanted no, to go off on that tangent for a second. Let's go on. Um, we talked about this already, so yeah. Um, this. You can talk about the first column, and I'll talk about the second. The first is ours. Um, this just goes back to the milestone. So when you guys go sit down to write this out, which we highly recommend, obviously, is just figure out what the milestones are in your world from getting a lead to contract to whatever they are, and, and figure out what those emails are going to be like. So when the contract's received, um, and these are just examples of some of the ones that we do, but you guys know the milestones in your, in your world and what should happen next. Um, yeah, go ahead. yeah, but basically, you know, these are the ones we think if you haven't done it verbally with them, which if you have the clients who want the phone call updates, always do them that way. But otherwise, they should be hearing from you in all of these points all the time. And it's helpful to have a script that you utilize with all of those in your mind or via email that you use every time, just because it'll save you so much time. It'll help you streamline your processes. That way, you never even have to think about, you know, there's that call, stuff that we're, the dread before the call. It's like you stress for 30 minutes about making the call and the, having these already planned out alleviates all that. So you can just get it done, move on with your day and get the next thing done. So we have examples of all these, which I think I have on another slide that you can utilize as a template if you want. Um, but I think it's great to have, you know, professional verbiage too, that way there's not typos you're not doing it in the car when you're rushing or forgetting an important thing you needed to tell them. If you have them done ahead of time, you make sure that the communication is that high level that you want every time. And the other really important thing on that, why I like emails, phone calls are obviously great, but the email makes sure that nothing was missed. It's a, there's a paper trail, right? Because we I've been in too many situations where it's a he said, she said, and I, I mean, I this literally just happened last week. We are talking to a client, and we quoted a rate. The very next day, he goes, "That's," and we quoted. You know, we talked about something. He goes, "That's not the rate you quoted me yesterday." And of course, all of a sudden, we're thinking, "Oh my gosh!" And we take notes on that. So I knew it was. But again, maybe who knows? Shockingly, I never told this. We found out he he called back the next day. Felt so bad. And of course, we just said, "Look, we're really sorry. We don't know how that, that got miscommunicated." I see in my notes. But you gotta be careful, right? You don't wanna be like, I told you so, right? That's not what we're about. Right. Um, and I don't know how that happened, but this is what it is. I mean, it, it just is, so how do we need to work through it? The next day he called back and goes, I am so sorry. He goes, I actually, he goes, if I work, they record phone calls. He goes, I went back and pulled our phone call and you did say the rate that he said you said. He goes, I don't know how I got the other rate in my head. Wow. But, the, but the, the, what that taught me was like this, it was literally like I told him the car's black, and he was like, you said the car's yellow. I mean, they weren't even remotely the same, like, how could you? So it was a good example of, like, people just don't focus, right? You're at work. Yeah, they hear what they want to yeah, hear, yeah. or you're busy, you're typing at work, you're listening to me, or you know, your wife's yelling at you over here, whatever's going on, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason I like the milestone emails is even if, if you make the call, if you still have a trigger system where you yeah. send these, even if it's later that day, you know, hey Brittany, it was great talking today. As I'll as discussed, up, yeah. I sent the appraisals done, whatever. Now you will never have, hey, that didn't happen. You go, oh, remember that email I sent you at 12.09 p.m. on Tuesday? Here it is again. You know, it's just good to be able to do that. And people appreciate that. Um, so we talked about this. We kind of already went over this. Don't go dark. I call it the pilot flame, so I tell people. It's like once you know that pilot flame starting, it's like put that fire out as fast as you can. If you don't answer your phone or you keep waiting, the fire grows and grows and grows, and they now think the situation's way bigger than it probably ever is. The other thing too is, very rarely is the situation so bad that it can't be fixed, especially if it's hit early. 
But I think um, this is like one of those differences from the first slide of what sets average agents versus great agents apart is great agents aren't scared when problems arise because they immediately take responsibility, communicate well, and propose a solution. Um, and also, great agents know that they're not going to say something if they don't know it. So they're going to say, you know what, I'm not sure, I'm going to call Stuart and find out for you, I'll get back to you within 30 minutes. You know, but that, those are the differences because I think all of us have been in situations where you kind of, um, I think you think in your head that how the person's going to react is worse than it is, right? So it's like you dread making that phone call to deliver bad news because you think how they're going to react, but it's not always the case. So, um, but I think to be a great agent, it's like no matter what, you just have to take control, take responsibility, find the solution, and uh, then follow through on it, obviously, too. Uh, we'll ask them for feedback. I love this. So at, at, at one point, this is our actual email that goes out. Um, we just say, hi, Bob. My number one priority is to ensure we're delivering excellent customer service. Now that we are this far in the loan process, I want to inquire on how our service has been up to this point. Please provide me your honest feedback and constructive criticism so that we can make sure we're delivering a five-star service. Look forward to your response. We trigger that at a certain point in every transaction when they're not expecting it. So it's, I love it because they get shocked with it and they go, oh, you're actually asking me like how it's going so far. It hasn't even closed yet. Because most of those are after closing. Yeah. Right? Oh, we've closed. How did we do? This is halfway through. So they're like, okay. And uh, so that that's one, like I told you when we began, if there's like three things you could write down to do, that would be one of them for sure. And Ask how you're doing halfway through. With that too, I think a lot of agents feel uncomfortable about that if they're a single agent, right? Because they're like, I don't want to... Um, I feel they're knowing they're the client knows that it's me that they're going to give the so they're you know concerned about the client's not going to want to give really open feedback. I think using the we verbiage is great. You do it is a team of people that make that transaction go, so it is totally fine to use the we verbiage. We want we're checking in. We want to know because it is a team, and that way I think people feel more comfortable to give honest feedback if it's not as personal if that makes sense. Yeah. So don't, even if you are a single agent, don't be afraid to use the our team, we, that verbiage, because it is, it is a team. And I think too that um, people will be honest with you if you just come at them authentically, right? If yeah. you were to halfway through make a phone call and say, hey, Bob, I don't know why I could use Bob as an example, <laughs> man. Um, you know, hey, Bob, I'm just curious, how's it been so far? Am I doing a great job? Am I doing what I said I was going to do? Be honest with me. I can take it. It's no big deal. Oh, I can take it. It's no big deal. And he might say, you know what? You've been pretty awesome, but I wish you would have done this thing better. And then, But he's going to appreciate the fact that you asked that because it's the whole thing. Like they, all they care about in the day is how you made them feel, right? And then that, that's what will lead to referrals, things like that. Um, we do a post-close check and I won't read the email. That should go without saying, have some sort of email or something to do after closing. We do ours two days after closing and we just send something saying, hey, here's what to expect. Like, I love this one because, I don't know if you know this, but when people close on a house, they get junk mail for Tons days mail. because it becomes public record. So all these companies go and they pull this information and they'll actually put VIP mortgage on their letters. So our clients think we're sending them all this stuff to buy, like for, shutters whatever and we'll it's get crazy. calls all the time and so when i that started happening i'm like we gotta put that in our post close check and so we have a thing that says be aware this is going to happen if you're questioning if it's us or not call us and we'll walk you through it so we have clients all the time taking pictures of mail and mailing it and like emailing us like is this real is that not illegal no no because it's, it's public, public records. Records. No, 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 i'm saying oh. for them to use your VIP. No. No. So the, the envelope, it's, it's a good question. The envelope doesn't have VIP as the return address, but once they open the envelope, it'll it'll reference VIP mortgage because we're on the, the oh, D. We've seen VIP. Yeah, and so if, and if you don't know the difference, you like, might think we sent it to you. And right? usually there's a size five font at the bottom, like we are not affiliated with VIP mortgage, but clients are confused. And this one I think is great too. We always let people know when their first payment is due because I think you know, as Stuart said, it's like there, there's so much coming at them through the process that then they actually get into the house and they're like, well, now what, you know? Yeah. So as an agent for you, you guys can do a check-in and say, you know, here's kind of some tips on things that are to come. Make sure, you know, when your first payment's due, make sure, you know, you know, for taxes that you have a copy of your settlement statement, all those kind of things. 
um, would really help on your end to do a post-close check-in too with some helpful hips, tips to be aware of for uh, the coming, you know, the remainder of the year. And that could be a phone call too. Because remember, yeah. this is all about them referring their friends to you, right? So you gotta you do something that allows them to the next person. Um, okay, so this um, is, I wanna talk about really quick. So I put together for a coaching program that I run, all of these, these are basically those milestones throughout the transaction, but it's all via video. So, and some people won't do this, and that's fine if you won't, you could do the same thing with an email. Um, but in my opinion, the video check-ins are amazing if you can actually do them. But basically, and, and if you introduce them properly to your clients, you know, I'm gonna be sending you videos periodically throughout the transaction. They all contain important information. I'll keep them short, but be sure to watch them. Um, it's a way that you can, they feel like you're staying in front of them the whole time because they're seeing it regularly. Um, but there's, we, you know, all of these scripts for every different thing and kind of what they can expect. But it's also, it's great, you know, you can introduce your lender, here's what to expect from them. Um, the lender can send one about like tips through the process, don't go get a car loan, you know, those kind of things. And then, yeah, all the different scenarios once the, the home is under contract. Um, but but video has been very powerful for conversion and referrals. So yeah. those are, we're running out of time, we're gonna have to hustle, but. Well, I can hustle. Celebrate closing, social media, you guys have all seen that stuff, right? No, yes, no? Mm -hmm. Take a picture. We used to take a picture of the closing table when we went to our signings and they would like post it on their social media. It was kind of cool. Uh, so, but with this, one thing I want to touch on, this goes back to Stuart's example of the restaurant. It's like, so Stuart may have had maybe not perfect service at the restaurant, but the next day when they call to say thank you for coming in, how's your experience, he's impressed by that call. So it's the same thing with these kind of things. It's like celebrating the closing is, a, is what they're gonna remember at the end of their transaction. So figure out how they wanna be celebrated, that's another thing, but, and really do it. And we, I do not like the generic, like, closing gifts. In my opinion, I think it doesn't, they're not as effective anymore. Um, so if you can find a way to make it a little more personal, it'll go a lot longer. I mean, this, this is an agent here, Mary Trujillo, and she literally wraps these doors and it costs her, you know, three dollars each time or whatever, but it goes such a long way. It, I mean, people appreciate all these little tiny touches um, and they want to be celebrated. Like if it's their first time, you know, first time home buyers, they want to be celebrated standing in front of their new house. So take any opportunities that you can that they're comfortable with to celebrate them um, and provide, when you can, more personalized gifts. Kind Same of goes along with example, that. baby blankets, all sorts of stuff you can do. Pick great partners, we talked about that. Um, and that's all, that's it. Yeah. We did it, boom! <laughs> Two minutes to spare, you guys have questions? And I have a couple things I'll leave you with, but anybody have anything you wanna ask? Anything not make sense? I came, I'm sorry, I came a little late, so are you with, are you both with VIP Mortgage? Yes. Both of you are mortgage brokers? Yes. Do you also go with um, agents to open houses? Our team does not. Okay. Um, we work seven days a week, but we take pre-calls a lot, all day on Saturday and Sunday with, from a lot of our agent partners. So we always want to make sure we're available to do the pre-calls on the spot for, for agents that have buyers at open houses that they meet. So we generally don't sit open houses with agents, but we are always available on the weekends. We're pretty much available 24 seven. <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah. We, we used to for a long time. Uh -huh. And then we just found it wasn't, it wasn't effective for us. It wasn't as effective when you really needed us to do something from a loan standpoint on a Saturday or Sunday, because like she said, we're around on the weekends for anything that you need. Um, there's not a weekend we're not working at. That way we can get what we need done on the computer. I mean, until you can do everything on the loan side on a phone, it's just really hard to do. Um, that's why we change that. But, but it's, you can always get a hold of us if you've got a situation or you've got someone that's on the phone. And we have found too that um, buyers don't go to open houses to talk about financing. You know, so they, they're generally, they fall, usually it's emotional first. They like the house, they feel, and then the prequel is the second step. Um, so we find that if you try to force the financing early before they've like emotionally bought into the home buying process, it can scare them off a little bit. Yeah. Um, any, does that make sense? Any other yeah. questions? So I, I would say, yeah. 
I was in your shoes, my three t the three things I would do right now is um, I would send handwritten thank you cards. I know it sounds simple, but we still we do it like clockwork. As soon as you meet somebody, so anytime you meet someone in an open house and you're able to get their information, that can be weird. Um, but a new client that's called you to ask, can you help me? As soon as you've had that conversation, just don't let that day end without sending out that thank you card. Keep a stack in your car, keep a stack at home on your desk, and just write them. It's not like it's going to be that many. You're not going to write 20 of them a day. And if you are, great, right? But yeah. I mean, um, that's a huge one. I don't know why more people don't do that. I have so many people I kind of coach and talk to, and I tell them to do it. They don't do it, but I don't understand it. But it goes a long, long way, especially if they called you, and then they called another realtor, or they went to two open houses and saw two people and they get a card from somebody, it's just automatically, you just separate yourself. Um, the second one is, I would write out a client journey. I know that one sounds like a, like, a, like the book report in, in high school you didn't want to write, but um, I would take an hour and just be like, okay, a lead comes in, like envision it in my head. What happens? I, I make a phone call, they get referred to me, I get them a transaction. Just think of 10 things, it doesn't have to be 56, right? 10 things that you're gonna do every time and then, you could literally, I'm just thinking as I go here, you could type that out, make 50 copies of it, and every time you get a new lead, you could just check those boxes on every time you move through that assembly line. So next time you talk to that person, you know what to do next. Just one simple way, if you don't want to use a CRM or anything like that. The third thing um, that I would do is um, have, some, like I said earlier, have some sort of, at some point in the transaction as part of that journey, ask like how your service is. And, you know, if I, if I was the guy that's up here that's super salesy, they'd probably tell you that at that moment, you ask for business too, right? Like, how's the service been? Is there anyone else you know right now that's looking to buy or sell a house? I think that's something that we all fail to do. Not enough of, we don't ask enough. We just sort of have a great, we have a great conversation. We assume that they're gonna use us. Um, and then they don't. And it's not because we did anything wrong, it's just because we didn't, we weren't just, we just, just didn't say, hey, I really want your business, what can I do? I mean, is there something I can do differently? I know I knew, that's a, I'll tell you what, I love that. If someone came to me and was new and was like, look, I'm new, I'm eager, I'm learning, I will always get you the answer, I would probably give that person business over a seasoned person just the way I am because like we were all there at some point. And I, I, I just respect that so much. I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna give you a chance and here's what I expect out of you, so as long as you hit these things, we're good. If not, calls me off. <laughs> anyway, that's it. So Good. three takeaways everyone get. Can you guys think you can do one of those three at least? It will change your business. The small, subtle things go in a long way in this business, and they get forgotten along. So, And we're always here if you guys need us. We'd love to be a resource for you guys with your buyers. So anytime we can help, please send them our way. We'll take great care of them. Uh, we have an office here, so you can always pop in. I'm here um, usually about three days a week at least. So, And if you guys have questions or on anything, whether it's a contract, whatever, um, or you have someone that you're dealing with that you want to just get like a second opinion from us on or a first opinion, which is always great, um, if you want to write this down, our email is simple. It's Crawford Team, spelled the way it sounds, C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D, team, at V I P M. TGINC.com, VIPMortgageInc.com. Cool. We'll get to you quickly. Absolutely. Thank you guys. We don't want to run too much over. I know there's yeah. another class yeah, in here. Yeah, And I'll send you guys the slides as long as you signed in. If you didn't, make sure to sign in. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, I am. Nice to see some new faces in here today. So I loved it. Any email match I sure will. Yeah. Um, the uh, checklist. Yes. Of course. Yeah, I'll send them today before I leave. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're, you're welcome. Glad you enjoyed. Yeah, we teach once a month here. So pop in the class. We teach a different topic. I think next month it's like condos and non traditional lending, construction loans, all that kind of stuff. So he's an amazing resource. So you can always pop in. So then Very good, thank you. You got one after this. Yes, I'm not teaching it, but yeah, there's a great class after this. She's a dear friend of mine, and she teaches on.